Hello everyone, welcome back. Game 2 starts now for eHome versus CDEC Youth. We've got CDEC Youth upsetting in game number 1, winning the game off the back of uh, an Inflame Invoker. We'll see if we've got more where that came from or if eHome will force a game 3. I'm Gods, joining me again is Danali. Happy Christmas Danali, how are we doing? Whoops. Or do I not? There we go. Sorry, I, I brought you in now. I was saying, Happy Christmas. How are we doing, Danali? Ready for game number two? Oh, I'm pumped. I hope, I'm actually hoping we get a game three today. First game three. I Hopefully. hope so as well. That would be a, a nice way to spend our Christmas Eve. No more of these 2-0 stomps. Although I guess game one was a bit of a stomp, but we can have at least a close series perhaps. And uh, Oh, here we go. Earth Spirit comes through. There's something different. Oh, this is exciting. This has I'm been excited. mostly banned out in all the games. I think the Chinese teams have had to deal with their fair share of Earth Spirits, as it is one of the uh, pub, quote-unquote, cancers over in the Chinese pub scene. So these teams know about this hero. They know how to use it, and they know what it can do. There were a couple of changes to Earth Spirit before it was brought into Captain's mode. What were they? The biggest fact, one... I didn't change. I didn't see any of the changes. So Geomagnetic Grip. This was the spell that kind of made the hero what he was can no longer pull teammates to safety, which is what it used to do. Oh, any any teammate in the stuff. past was just, not even like a four stuff, like it would just pull them to you. So if your carry in the front lines was like in trouble, you just pull them out and they're safe. So you can no longer pull teammates with the spell. You can only pull rocks, or if you get an Ag Scepter, then you can pull teammates. So it forces you to go into an Ag Scepter to be able to get that. And Ag Scepter is basically a core item for the hero now as a result. And he's typically played offlane, correct? Because he needs the farm. Yeah, I think... Before in the past, he would be played as a four position support, but now with needing the farm, maybe we'll see him more in the off lane role. Or if he's in a support role, he needs to be given a decent amount of farm. Mm. So I like what eHome's done here, giving some respect to Inflame and saying, no, you are not having an Invoker this time. So instead, he's going to have something else in the form of a DK, it seems. Oracle pick up as well for C deck. So we saw one Oracle game today. I don't remember if it was a complete disaster or if it was actually a complete success. I'm pretty sure it was a disaster. Uh, the Oracle game we Am saw... No, I think I saw an Oracle win, no? but the Oracle wasn't was really... Oracle a... win? Yeah, yeah, there was an Oracle win it... from LGD... No, no, you're right, there was a disaster game. and There was there was a game where the Oracle lost. Okay, um, so the hero's hit and miss. Yeah, yeah, I, I, the game it lost was very much... It didn't seem like an Oracle problem, it was just like the teams were horribly mismatched perhaps you could say so i don't know i'm not i think that hero, hero is just like a very safe he kind of reminds me of dazzle like you just put him into a draft and he's a safe stable uh five position support so. he's just special he gives you something a little bit different compared to all the standard supports we normally see having things like this purge and having the fates edict coming into effect as well yeah this hero is still complicated for me i'm still not used to this <laughs> I struggle. okay every hero that comes out every new hero that comes out gets more and more complex so i think we're going to come to the point where we're going to have heroes that are having 10 effects happening in the same time for one spell and even the old heroes that you thought you knew are now new heroes you've got time dilation on faceless void who knows exactly what the hell that spell does and you've got this new spell on death prophet that like siphons something or other like they're just they're just confusing Soul sometimes siphon? um was it sure Soul i don't actually know the name of the spell i know it like i don't it, it drains like Five percent seconds, hp per second or something as far as i, I know. didn't like it overall it just doesn't feel like a death prophet spell yeah. anyways there's no death prophet anyway unless someone picks it then we can go into the death prophet discussion so no, yeah. I think Death Prophet's changing... actually weaker. That's what someone was saying, uh, like, did yeah. an analysis of the new Death Prophet versus the old one, and apparently all in all, the hero is just worse at what it used to do. So I don't know. Maybe maybe someone's going to eventually discover the strength of the new heroes. Yeah. Maybe you just have to wait for that person or that time to come. For now, we'll just say they're weaker until someone discovers the true potential of those heroes. Yeah. Um, Phantom now, Lancer. Got... remaining. This is Phantom Lancer picked up. This is a great hero against Undying and Earth Spirit. You can bring down the tomb very quickly with illusions because illusion hits count as a full attack. And you can get out of Magnetize using Doppelganger. It entirely gets rid of Magnetize. So it's actually a really nice hero against Earth Spirit, assuming you don't die during the silence. So I think the PL is a pretty handy pick here for C Deck Youth. 
Yeah, I agree with you completely. You hear they need because there's this Phantom Lancer in the pool now, they need a little bit of extra disable outside of the Earth Spirit. And Earth Shaker, step in the right direction. If he gets a blink dagger as well, then PL has to always worry about the Earth Shaker effect, the slam dunks on uh, the PL plus illusions. Not a complete hard counter, but he is a great hero that is gonna help out. Only problem though is that they've got three melee heroes right off the bat. Yeah, Lane's not looking fantastic with these picks. I mean, Undying, despite being a melee hero, is one of the better slash best laning heroes. Um, I wouldn't really consider him a melee hero as far as like the laning stage goes. He doesn't have the same problems that a melee hero does, and uh, we'll have to see how they look to kind of fit these heroes around. But most likely, two of these three heroes, these are all support slash off laners. So unless we're seeing something crazy like a mid Earthshaker against the Dragonite, which is possible, just unlikely. But I don't know. We could see. It'll be very, very situational if yeah. we see a mid Earthshaker. Unless you see mid Earth Spirit, That's... you bring that hero into position two. That could happen, I guess, if you play him like more like a tempo controller and get some kind of an off laner that maybe gets some farm. But that would be a good way to get a fast ag scepter on the hero. So when the hero first was ridiculously overpowered it was played in the mid lane just because he was so good at everything and would just kill everyone with ease so um i'm not sure if old chicken can play the earth spirit mid we'll have to wait and find out we'll see but... unless you see cty playing earth spirit and i think that would be a treat to see how he handles that Ooh. hero safe lane farming carry earth spirit my i don't think it, i don't <laughs> i don't think it would ever be a safe lane farming no. earth spirit i don't i don't feel like he just fits that role Mid that would be is max. the least likely of any lane safe lane farming is the least likely for earth spirit but yeah we'll see i don't think you can fit him in there they definitely need some That's actual carry exactly and damage right. output with this draft which is something they're kind of lacking until urshika gets a blink which is still something you don't want to play around like oh es is now our like dps dealer but yeah, could... Ehem's draft feels like it's on a time limit. Do you, does it feel like they need to grab I... those heroes to sort of end the game early? Because it... they don't scale that well, right? It depends what they pick. Like, they could just go and pick an anti-mage here. Like, this is a pretty good anti-mage game. The hero can hit his item timings before the PL. He can out-farm a PL. So, like, there are heroes they can pick that doesn't put them on a timer. Like, they can secure the late game by getting... Uh, certain picks for their draft. And I think they'll definitely go into some fairly decent carry here uh, to go with their draft. Like, none of these three heroes have any physical damage output, which is something they definitely need. So, I wouldn't no be surprised to see an well. AM. Yeah, no Tower Push. Yeah. Terror Blade also. The Tower Push is. Yeah. I, I guess Terror Blade. We've seen a couple Terror Blades. Both have won so far. Maybe that's a hero that even Ehome could consider running. Maybe, but I think Terrorblade will suffer this game. Though. There's a leaner on the board, and you yeah. know how squishy Terrorblade is before he gets those items. So if they pick Terrorblade, then they have to be very confident knowing that you know Terrorblade's going to work and we're comfortable running him. Timbersaw. And Timbersaw. Huh. I now, don't know what they're doing I'm with this draft. <laughs> I don't know either, but I'm on board with this. Yes. There's no control with this. There's no control on C-Deck to keep a Timbersaw in line. Yep. So if Timbersaw blows out of control, he's going out of control. I think they're expecting a mid Timbersaw against the Dragonite. They ban out Electrek, which is like a CTY safe lane type hero. So um, something crazy coming out from me. All strength heroes as well. Yeah. yeah. Every the all strength line. Four melee strength heroes. What melee strength heroes are left that CTY could play? Really I'm concerned sure. about the the safe lane for Ehome. What's what sort of harassment are they going to apply to the off lane for to youth? There's, there's no hero outside of maybe an Undying they'll be able to apply pressure. Hmm. I mean, Undying's That's actually cool. ridiculously good at zoning off laners, despite being a melee hero. You just like run at them, you decay, and because you're stealing strength, it means your base damage is higher. Then you just start right clicking them, and I, it's actually miserable to play against Undying in the off lane, despite him being melee. But not the best zoning support, but definitely up there is one of the better ones. Mm. Hmm. So, what does nice. C-Deck want to pick? Life? Okay, Whoa. I like this game. I like this game. Okay, that's I'm a excited. hero receives some buffs. His feast life still got increased a little bit. His rage also gets more attack speed at early levels, I believe. So, uh, all in all, uh, a more powerful he's hero. Great. He's the off He's great up well. against Ehome. Yeah, I think he's going to be maybe... I mean, we saw it last game from Ehome. Iron Talon first item, you do it on a, it's even better on a lifesteal than a slider because lifestealer can actually jungle using the lifesteal. So he's got that big camp available. He can Iron Talon it down. Yeah, I could see that being the strat perhaps, but I'll have to wait and see. It definitely does 
play as the off lane of this game. Unless they do it safe lane and then have like an aggro tri lane. Lena Oracle PL, you're against all melee, so maybe that is the another call. Yeah. Say so this That's last safe. pick for E Home Shadow Fiend. This is a safe pick, honestly. They need someone to sort of scale into the late game and Shadow Fiend can do it, but he's not gonna out carry a Dragon Knight, Phantom Lancer, and a life and, he, and even a Lena to a certain degree. Yeah. They're putting a lot of, you know, a lot of pressure on the Shadow Fiend to perform this game and for that to happen, they need jungle stacks, they need to win their lanes, and I'm expecting aggression from Ehome. They can't let C Deck get the lanes that they want. Yeah, I like the I think the SF was like the perfect right the perfect right click carry to last pick here. It's a ranged hero, has some minus armor to fight these melee carries, and you can just sit back and kite them around. Like items like SMY Scotty will give heroes like life stealer, DK problems. The AoE damage from a Requiem allows you to fight into the PL pretty well. So I think it was actually like an ideal pick for their draft to round things off and I was I was really worried and concerned for Ehome's draft, and I see the SF, and I'm like, okay, this pulls it together. This draft can work. Um, not to say I feel like they've won the draft, but definitely it becomes a lot clearer how this draft can take this game. Absolutely, I think they're under uh, they're going to be under pressure to really perform though, because if you compare the two drafts, ease of execution is going to be on the side of Cedic. They've got a draft that's pretty, you know, pretty straightforward, pretty cookie cutter. You know what you want to do, whereas for Ehome. They need to play aggressive, but they also need to play the aggression perfectly because they don't have the catch potential that C Deck has. They don't have, you know, the, they don't have the same level of disables that C Deck and uh, uh, that C Deck has, and even burst to a certain degree. So if these ganks happen for E Home, they have to they have to work every single time. Otherwise, you're going to be wasting time of heroes that are participating in these ganks. And I think Old Chicken, he really has to perform this game. Oh yeah, Tim redemption Solar time is. A big hero to look out for this game. He's going to have an Earth Spirit roaming around, so there's a lot of gank potential from Kaka. He's got that Rolling Boulder, which he can use from Fog to initiate in on the mid lane. Oh, and they're going to get the level 1 D Ward. I think they saw Kaka plant this Ward, in fact. He was kind of lurking around that mid lane, and he just like poked his nose up, planted the Ward, which is something you can't really do in the mid lane. It's very visible to the opposing team. So it gives him And he put a Sentry Ward uh -huh. as well, looking for a Sentry too. He gets nothing. So that's effectively a lot of gold wasted for Kaka. Yeah, that's something he's gonna have to go back and watch the replay and be like, oh, right, you can't actually plant a ward from the river, because you get you get river vision just from your tower. So, perhaps slightly mispositioned. Anyways, we'll see one bounty run apiece, Timbersaur and Dragonite, the two mid laners. Kaka, the, to me, the hero to look out for on the uh, Radiant side, just because he's gonna be rotating around roaming a lot, and it's gonna be up to someone like Icy on the Lena to kind of be in the right position and react to those rotations. Yeah, absolutely. So, lanes going to be happening very short. Or they're going to be underway right now. Lifesteal has gone for two fairy fires and no uh, Iron Talon. I need to get no. used to these item names. I'm not sure what, like, the Iron Talon is one of those new items. I'm just, like, not sure how good it is or when you want to get it. But, I mean, junglers, obviously, it's great on, but outside of that, Hard to say for sure. And they're actually dual ending this. Lena down here with the life sealer. Suddenly this lane doesn't look so great for the Shadow Fiend. It doesn't. But there is an opportunity for E Home to get a kill on the Lena. If Icy gets out of position and he gets caught out, then it could be a kill going in the way of E Home. But again, it's it's gonna be the positioning game, whereas in play mid lane, taking a lot of harassment already by our Timbersaw. As you said, gonna be a very, very difficult game. And look at Lanham, he's just walking right at Icy. Although there is going to be a small open wounds, LSA going to follow. Lanham drops to half, but he doesn't really care. I like how SF runs up like, hey, watch out for me, I'm going to raise you. It's like, oh, I'm level 1. He's not going to do anything <laughs> at level 1. He's got 47 ba damage, and that's definitely not a hero who can help out the Undying, per se. But at least having a body there scares C-Deck Youth away a little bit. and. Undying doing a good job just securing the SF early last hits and farm. He needs to start building up those souls. Yeah, and because of because of this dual lane from C deck, it's forced Karkar down to the bottom lane as well because he's going to be consistently worrying about his allies. And you look at our poor Earthshaker up top. I was going to say he was doing okay, but now he's being chased up by a Oracle. Actually, can he outrun this? He's being healed up a little oh, bit. Oh, the lance, no. Oh, Ooh. What? Oh, okay, never mind. That triple that was close. purifying flames. The Purifying Flames does heal you a little bit, and that's what we kind of saw there a couple times in a row, where he was getting a little bit of heal after the nuke, and unfortunately for him, it just wasn't quite enough to stay alive in the lane. Yeah, the range on Purifying Flames is quite long as well. So, if, as the moment he's in range, you're going to be hit. Yeah. 
It did cost him a lot of mana, so PL chewed through like two lances there. Oracle used up a big portion of his mana pool, though does have a clarity in Mango, so not quite as uh, important. But if these heroes were out of money, TP's back in the lane, suddenly he can get a lot of XP and contest the lane, but not really the case here. Aim still has 11. one lance and... 11 already has a lot of EXP. So yep. I don't think you would actually mind if you die, because even though you're dying, you're getting a load of levels out of it. So if he didn't have levels and he was dying, then obviously at that point you want to move out. But he's he's comfortable. He's making a, a home out here, maybe even a treehouse in the jungle. He's huh. happy. By the way, speaking of making a little treehouse, June on the life stealer, ancients life steal at level three is apparently a thing. He farms ah. up a black dragon. That's a lot of golden XP. Gets him halfway to level 4. And now he's going to farm with the little dragons. Okay. And he may well, actually is... smoke with the oracle here. It looks like they are prepping for this. He's got a salve so he can heal up afterwards. And then we'll see if they head somewhere for a gank. Mid lane though. Rolling boulder. Inflame the target. Throws a stunner and backs off. So Looks like Lifesteal are not going to go for the smoke. He's just going to head to the next camp. So... Uh, this is a happy life stealer. He's, yes. just, he's getting free EXP, free farm, and Icy's down here. And there's nothing that e -Home's really doing to keep Icy out of lane. They're just going to push him out, but... They have no kill potential. They can zone him exactly. with the Undying, but there's never... Unless Icy makes a huge mistake, he should never die. He's even got boots, so... There's no stun, there's no slow. You don't die versus this lane if you're Alina. Yeah, this is the problem with their draft. As I said Top earlier, they just got no catch. Another oh, purifying, purifying flames. flames. Needs oh. one more. He oh, used it himself. He double clicked it. Oh. Okay, they still got the kill. He actually had the kill on the Oracle. Aim the now. Timbersaw. He's going to get punished for this. Ooh, oh, Oracle. He had the. He accidentally double clicked it and had the self cast on double click option. Oh. PL would not have had to dive as far as he did if not for that purifying flame misclick, but. Oh well, they they still get the kill, but unfortunately for uh, Cedek Youth, they give a Timbersaur a solo kill. Oh man, that, that's not where you want to be in. I think in the mid lane, just a bit of harassment to inflame, and Kafka's coming in, he, but he's gonna hit him once. He Sorry. airballed the uh, the rolling boulder. <laughs> <laughs> On a stunned hero, that was. A, <laughs> he's getting used to the area, you know. New heroes in CM mode. It's fine. Yeah. It's. Fine. For comedic purposes, that was actually quite fun to watch. <laughs> Uh, just cue the music. Just cue yep. the music. Make a highlight reel. As I said before, highlight reels are good. Whether it be a you know completely yep. intentional or not, highlight reels are good. Plays uh, of the week, the fails like... of the week, same kind of thing, you know. <laughs> CTY is going to be in trouble though. We've got two men's yep. rotation, June and Demons coming in for a side rotation. Now, do they have the initiation that they're after? Cuts through the trees and more CTY. Wasn't expecting this. Rest in peace, the Shadow Fiend. Set back to where I came from, and the kill went to Lena. Yeah, that's a very vulnerable, like, this is one of the big problems with the SF in the safe lane, is he's very vulnerable to ganks. Mid lane, they've gone in an in flame, he'll actually take out the tombstone. He's got 14 one charges, he may live, he may get a kill off of this. One more oh, right click, he no. gets the kill. Four heroes come mid, he kills a tombstone, and he kills an earth spirit. That's the dream. That's more than a dream. That's, that's something beyond the dream. Oh my goodness. So, now Ehome have realized what they lack. They lack burst damage and they also lack control. Yeah, their burst damage, I guess Timbersaw is somewhat their burst damage, but even SF with the raises is also, but SF can't rotate. But, no, not, not yet. Not yet. He will eventually, but this is the weakest point of the game for Shadow Fiend if he's safely. That he can't yeah. really do anything because he puts himself at risk if he tries to go in for any sort of rotation. And I think again they might look for... They're thinking about trying to jump onto aim. No one's here. Mid lane though, that's where the real jump is. Old 11. It's been... Uh, one or two more oh, right clicks. Purifying flames got him. Uh, Just need another right click. Top lane though. You mentioned the jump on aim. Ow! Oh, timber chain misses. Has not been oh. Ehome's game as far as landing skill shots go. Yeah, it hasn't. There was even an arcane rune on the timber source. That was a prime opportunity to try and go for a kill. Yeah. There's still half duration though. Nah, it's, he's too low. It's, he, you wouldn't really feel confident trying to jump onto a PL under the tower. But the situation for the team, though, C-Deck are leading by almost 2k EXP. Seven minutes into the game, and you take a look at net worth, C-Deck are leading as well by a small margin for gold, but they're in a good spot right now. 
And just, June's gonna hit level 6 and he may just infest an Ancient and run around inside an Ancient to help his fuck team fight. I see- Oh, he dodges a raise! Dodges two raises! CTY! Getting juked! The support player showing he can make some plays here, recognizing that a fish is gonna kill him off. I see. Pops a fairy fire. He may survive the fissure, but can he survive oh, the right it. click? No. Still wasting a lot of their time there, but does end up going down. Oh, Top chicken though, really low like being chased? Can they get him? Oh, Whoa. purifying. Okay, this is this what spell is. is I don't I don't want to say broken, but this spell is ridiculous. This spell like defines the hero. You just spam this, it's got a 2.25 second cooldown. Like, you can just spam it out as a nuke, and then it replaces the previous heal, so you can just use it multiple times in succession, and... Demons... will also scare the Earth Spirit off this top rune. They're gonna die for this! They've got the S4 rune! This is... the ideal 8-minute rune. Any TPs? There's one TP. Okay. And it's only the Undying, so... Force the TP out, that's fine. Small win. Start poking the tower since he used his ultimate, that's some just free damage in general. Finally they come and contest the Lifestealer here in the jungle! 11, can he get the Echo one Slam fissure. off? One fissure. Rage? He's gonna time the Rage well. And he does. He got the Rage, Oh. He uses it in Fog as well, knowing that the Earthshaker can cancel the Fissure if he has Vision, and sees the Rage, but... Yeah, Lifestealer. Very close to level 6 now. Just trying to leech it here at the bottom lane, it looks like. Mid lane, meanwhile. Oh, can they finish off the DK? He's really tanky. Still alive. He may drop, there's actually gonna be False the ultimate promise. coming out from- He's being healed oh. up now. That's, that okay, that's, he's echo? dead now. Oh, he should okay. die that's, through. That's it. No, he healed up enough! What? That... Oh... So he got the heal off from the Purifying Flames with a Fate's Edict, so he blocked the nuke damage and then healed him up during it, and here comes Lifestealer! He's in the ground at Golem! 400 movement speed running right at you! Punching you! Punching you once more, once more! Good luck running from this Earth, guy! Earthshaker's... Earthshaker's trying to body oh, block Lanham! Lanham. He needs he to can't, get out of there! You can't decay! Okay. You can't decay this oh, fella. Oh there. my god, they this could is. Kill this though. Uh, oh, that didn't block. Even if it blocks, he just runs fast and he's magic immune, so it doesn't stun him. Oh my god, this is flashbacks to Alliance when they did this with Loda. Some clowny stuff. This is this is like 6.86 Dota right now. I don't know what we're watching. You've got Oracle running around spamming these like 300 damage nukes on a 2.2 second cooldown. Got Lifestealer running around as an Ancient. This game is... You got Lifestealer just jungling and Ancienting from level 1. Like, this is some clowny Dota, but I'm, I'm liking it. I like it too. It's just Ehome sort of caught off guard with the Lifestealer pick. Because who honestly picks Lifestealer nowadays? Yep. Ehome's still doing really well. Like, looking at the net worth, SF is well ahead of everyone as far as farm oh, goes. This is not where you want to be if you're CTY. Oh. Get away. Okay. And they're bringing the reinforcements reinforcement. mid, yeah. The PL not farming as well as you'd like for the C deck side. And that's just where the SF is going to be rushing a Shadow Blade for the team, so... So it looks like it's a Fighting Shadow Fiend. Is there any heroes picking up a mech in this game? Um, no. Undying eventually, I guess, but eventually is a very long ways off. Both Radiant supports are very poor. I talked about Earth Spirit needing an Ag Scepter. Well, he's bottom of the net worth by a pretty big margin right now, so... Said item... Could take some time and- Oh, oh CTY, okay. that's CTY. not where you want to farm. He, he felt safe. He said, okay, my jungle is being contested all the time, I'm gonna use your jungle. Yep. <laughs> same, same outcome. Exact so, same outcome. He still dies. And there's this fun and balanced item called Aether Lens that this Oracle has almost got enough money for as well, so... <laughs> Dota gonna get very oh. interesting when Demons farms that one up. I could, you can tell this guy's played a lot of Oracle, he knows what to do. He's, exactly. He's just spamming that nuke, getting kill after kill, using and it the, to farm and, the lane. And this Aether Lens makes it difficult for Ehome to deal with the Oracle, because he can sit even further back to cast his spells. Yeah. And when it comes to chasing, you're not kidding away. Because Demon's lane. gonna hunt you all the way down. We've gone in looking for Lanham here, there's another Dragon Slave. Can Lena turn around for this one? TP's coming in. I've scared them off. That was a Laguna Blade and everything, so they don't get the kill. It's not cool down there, it's no big deal if Icy uses the Laguna Blade. Just wastes a little bit of mana, but that's no that's no biggie. Oh, mid lane, that was a oh. nice kill from Old Chicken. The Timber Chain to finish him off while he was TPing. Look at everyone on E-Home just homing in on the oh Lifestealer. He's chasing God. after Lanham. What? And now Lifestealer on the run. What a they Dota 2 game. It, he pops the Flesh Golem and Lifestealer's just like, Yeah, I'll get out of here, guess what? It's time for a new vehicle.
It's like GTA. You fuck up your first car, it's like, okay, let's just hop out, let's jump in another car. No problem. Easy. There's no big cars, though. It's all the small ones left. Yeah, that's... Okay, he, he can... Let no, no, he's... Oh, yeah, it's just... He can sack it again, I guess. He's probably... Or he's gonna go to the Radiant ones. Kaka's like, uh, can we stop Life Stealer getting these? Is that possible? <laughs> At this point, you just have to put... You have to block both ancient games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't think it's worth the commitment, but if they don't want to deal with this life steal, like, you're gonna have to do something about it. That'll, that'll hey, mean blocking he's, it. He's found it. He's he's like, ooh, new car, shiny Porsche. New Let's car. go. <laughs> the granite Porsche. Right. Seems pretty fast as well. So journey up north, it seems. No, nope. journey <laughs> down to running. And you have to be a bit careful. You don't farm very much. Like he's not farming. He's trying to no. create space, and he needs to be able to find his team kills or objectives because right now Ehome are farming the map like as much as we're talking up the life on what he's doing you look at the overall farm on some of these heroes and it is going pretty well for Ehome. Yeah so see deck down towards the bottom they want this T1 tower old chicken as well as Kaka and our earth shakers here they do manage to catch out in flame do they have enough disables no and Just it looks like this will be up. the retreat for C deck. Very and early we'll get denied. false promise but I think he was trying to just get rid of a stun from it like he saw the mm. boulder coming in. But. Completely whiffed oh, though, mid lane? Oh. Okay, no kill. Didn't get the dragon tail off. SF managing to escape back to base. Picks up his shadow blade and... We could see a quick kill on a PL here. Just level 1 Requiem. Unfortunately for SF, he's not quite level 11. That would have been a, a key level pick, uh, I, level pick up to go with the item Middle. pick up. They want in flame. Can they take him down in time though? They may have to commit the echo slam to get that too. They no. get the DK kill. And no. June picks up an arcane rune and just runs. Uh. In the meantime, they've got... Oh. Pump He's looking top. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Timbersaw. Nah. Oh, jeez. Timbersaw narrowly missing a kill himself. So SF's Shadow Blade has been revealed now, so that's at least no one to the spot. CDX side. Can they Honestly, catch you? Uh, no, Sol Ring, Fissure? No, he's not going to go for it. It doesn't really feel like this game's going that well for CDX. Despite them no. having a kill advantage, they're not farming amazingly well. PL's actually going for a travels build, so they're looking to play for the late game. They do not want to fight now with a boots to travel PL. I'm just not sure how the life seal is meant to fit into this draft. I guess he's just meant to farm while in an ancient creep. Oh, I don't know. Oh, the fireball! So nice. And looks like eleven should. No, he's okay. gonna be able to get out because of the heal. It's fine. Thank you, Oracle. In the meantime, they're black dragon gonna come in again. Life stealer back to those shenanigans, he's, just running right through the enemy team. He's and kind he, of, this is what you're talking about. He's, uh, ma he's making space. He's kind of like kind a of bounty like hunter who isn't invis, but also is like imagine a bounty hunter who's invulnerable but not invis. Like that's what he's doing right now. He's just running around, scouting out everyone, giving vision for his team, creating kind of space, and he's invulnerable, but he's not invis. At the same time, just scouting information and giving his team room to take towers is very valuable. So. It's working out okay. But it won't work out for too long though, because there's going to come a point where Ehome can sort of deal with the ancient creeps and then Life Sealer yeah. has to find another way to make space for his team, or if that if he reaches that point, he might just have to start farming and hope he can scale in time to help the team out. CTO has had he's enough. Still... He's, he's itemizing yeah. to kill ancient. He's like, I'm going oh. Shadow Blade, Life Steal, Helm of the Dominator. Wouldn't even be surprised to see him go into like a Scotty or something just to be able to kill this freaking ancient creep. Like, if, if I'm CTY, I'm just annoyed by this at this point. I think everyone is. Just look at Ehope. They they won't they won't even separate from their teammates as well because they know that if they separate, they're gonna be picked off. Is he gonna go for the radiance? Is that actually gonna happen? It shouldn't. I don't think uh, radiance is gonna help out the life stealer that much. It just costs way too much. It, yeah, it's more you can you you get the radiance burn damage when you're in the uh, ancient is mostly why you've I say sometimes see it. You very rarely see it, but it has been done before. Is look yeah, I can I can see it being useful, but it would probably be useful now. Yeah. If he had a it's... super early radiance, then it'll be a huge problem for Ehome, but because he's gonna get it at what? 20, 20 minutes? It's, yeah. It comes a little later amazing. than you'd like. Exactly. It's still pesky to deal with, but yeah, by that point, SF should be tanky enough. They should have the survivability. Shake is actually a blink dagger. Not that it's an item that's going to help against a freaking ancient creep. Oh boy. It helps initiate, though. And I think that's what Ehome needs. They just need that initiation to sort of get their way into C deck and just sort of uh, fight them in a more comfortable position rather than having C deck initiating. 
Because if Eham can get into position to fight, then I think for them, it'll just be much easier for them to execute. It's back Any to his one old defending ways. top. Yeah. Back and to his, got two. Back in a Thunder Lizard now. <laughs> It's so weird seeing these ancients because, like, half the time I'm like, "What are these new?" I knew there's the fireball is a new spell on the uh, the dragon one, but even this thunder lizard has some weird looking spells. It's got a slam. It does a movement speed slow. The got frenzy. War drums. Yeah. They're technically free drums. Oh yeah, the aura. That's right. Yeah. And the frenzy, I think they changed it so you can cast it from longer range or something. Um, there was some slight tweaks to what to how this unit works in the the latest patch. Still. Probably the most liked creep, ancient creep. Everyone still prefers black dragons and granite gods. Yes, those are everyone, definitely everyone's favorites. Uh, Poor Thunder Lizard. This guy's just too squishy. The the, the granite golem has like 2k HP. The dragon also has like 2k HP. Old chicken up top. Ah, uh, he no just out. Yeah. They, they actually, uh, it's just Lena, I guess, who... Lena had a ton of gold early. Is this... Okay, Yule Scepter is almost complete. By almost, I mean like halfway. It's actually not that close. Earthshaker? He's in position. And Army is here with all of his illusions. Is this is this for Earthshaker to make the play? I don't think I'm going to follow up though. Oh, They're Chicken's here. Oh, he's, oh, he, he, scout, he scouts forward, seeing if it was real. But the real PL had backed off just in time. Nice play from Army. Yeah. He's going full greed mode. Yasha, boots of travel. It doesn't get like any greedier than this. Alright, so CTY oh, actually done. starting to hurt, by the way. He almost, like, he just took down half the Ancients HP in no time at all. Oh my goodness. So, that's, uh, good news for him. Dude, it must be so hard to play Lifesteal. You have to, like, know all the different attack animations. Like, when you're trying to last hit with a hero, like, you have to know how long it takes for the projectile to move, and, like, the different wind-up of your, kind of, like, your sword or something. So, for Lifesteal, you have to know, like, all these different neutral unit last hit patterns. It must make life very difficult. Yeah, they don't have the best base damage as well, so as the, yeah. as, as the game gets later, it doesn't get easier as this lifesteal actually gets harder. <sighs> yes. He's doing it. He's picked up a relic. Is he? He's picked uh, up a relic. I, I, don't, I, don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm sad or like secretly really happy and excited. Well, there's a Blink Echo Slam. False promises there. They're going to turn this one around and heal him up. I think there should be enough heal. He's nope. TPing out. Can they cancel? They cancelled it! Oh, that's oh. it. That's all they needed. I thought it just... I think he could have just tried to run away, and Oracle could have used another Purifying Flames, but even so, it was a nice gank from Ehome, and there was no tier 1 tower there to protect him, so there was no backup ever coming in, so... They killed the carry! At this point... Mid lane, though. Oh! Okay, that's a Shadow hero you don't want to lose. Oh, they look at Undying. He, he's just man-moding Icy, he doesn't care, and here comes Old Chicken! He wants in flames, a bit of a redemption kill, they bring everybody in as well. Okay. So, Lina and DK gone. And Ehome, yeah, they, they lose the Shadow Fiend, but they got both heroes in return. They are doing the best thing possible, which is pretending Lifestealer is not in this Dota game. And it's working. Lifestealer is not in this game, and Ehome will do just fine. Like, if, if Ehome just ignore the Lifestealer, they probably win this game. He's... He's gonna affect... He's gonna eventually reach a point where he's a non-factor. Because he's not doing much anymore. Like, He's gonna have a Radiance. Minutes. What do you do with a Radiance? <laughs> You, you die to SF is what's going to happen here is the the problem. Oh man. I mean, at this point he's committed. Like it was very much the strategy. So I don't feel like you can. Once he started saving up like three K gold, there was no like okay, let's change your mind and pick up an armor. No, it's like you're committed to this strategy. You go all out for it. But... And look at CCY. He's hunting. He hasn't got souls though. Sentry Ward will scout out CTY, and he's got no BKB. Oh. Will they find him? Yes, they will. This is bad. False promise. Heals up Oracle and. He should be able to yep, keep himself alive. Oh, they will get June though. Looks like June's gonna go down. They keep him disabled, and oh, they can, have the Timber Sword he here. No rage. Uh, no sound. No. No. So they they kill the Life Stealer. They lose Shadow Fiend. They're still a win that's, for C deck. Yeah, that's worth. Your Life Stealer is, I don't know, useless hot pile of bait. garbage right now. Yeah, he is bait. <laughs> exactly. He's bait. <laughs> that is his role in this game: is to bait and create space for the real carry, which is PL. PL has to carry this game for C deck. I, I, I'm still enjoying this. Like, you look at Life Sealer, yeah. he's 2 1 and 1. He hasn't, like, his scoreline's decent, but realistically, he's not farming that well, and he's not really making plays happen right now. But it's no. it's been fun to watch. It's, it's different. 
compared to what we normally see. Yeah. This, this game's this still is a much very winnable for C deck too. They've got a much better farm distribution. Like their supports have good farm, whereas you look at Ehome, they have two very poor supports. Lena's going to have a Yule. You've got Oracle, who's got the Aether Lens and can look to pick up another item soon. So, on the side of Ehome, it's much more concentrated on just their two carries. I think they can't afford to really give any more gold away though. Because yeah. what are the other heroes really going to give you? It's mostly the Timbersaw and Shadow Fiend that's doing most of the work now. Later on, when once they have all their items, then they can start sharing the farm a little bit more and give it to their supports. But once Earthshaker has blinked, I think that's it. You can just sort of let him go and say, okay, can we're going to give the rest of our farm to our yeah. carries because they need it. They need it much sooner compared to what uh, compared to the Earthshaker, who's a one-trick pony once he's cast all yeah. of his spells. And it's also largely like the the outcome of what Lifesteal is doing is that he creates so much space that all the supports get to farm and Ehome, their supports get zoned out of the map because of the Lifestealers. So even if the supports wanted to farm, I don't feel like they particularly could. Ooh. Yes. Well, this is interesting for CTY. Uh -huh. Does he get scouted here? It doesn't look like it. See, they're going to look to farm up their Ancient stack for now. Mostly small Ancient here, as courtesy of Mr. Lifestealer. All the way to at bottom. There's so many well, Ehome heroes showing on the map. You just do not expect a solo SF in the Roche pit right now. Yeah, Snook that's what I was going to say. So it looks like mission success, unless DK checks it out. He's not. He's 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 got just one thing on his mind, which is getting some sweet, sweet gold right now. He has a blink, though, so he's nearby and he just wants to go for a quick check. Yeah. It should be too late, though. Yep. It'll be too late. Oh, Bashes, oh, here comes Lifestealer. Life the space creating uh, life stealer. <laughs> I don't know if that's space created anymore. That's more like uh, space, space scene. Has he got the? Oh, he's just got the radiance. Here we go. Bloody hell! This is gonna get even clownier now. Let's I want to see if it actually makes a difference. It's is nice. It gonna... It's you do that like when you're chasing people around, you do much more reliable damage. Uh, not to mention you farm and push waves. Like think lone druid spirit bear with radiance. Like you can creep skip and push waves out. So. It has a similar kind of effect with the Radiance, you could say. Yeah. They actually scout out the Radiant Ancient Sack. They could look to contest this with the next DK ulti form. But DK actually quite poor. No BKB just yet. No, well, you've got Arme farming all over the map, so there's not that much farm left, unfortunately. And it looks like but down bottom, this T1's going to drop. I don't think Cedar's going to defend this. It's just way too low. In the meantime, though, they're looking for old chicken. Yeah, that's but, um, not a kill they can really there. get. He is not quite unkillable, but they would have to use next to everything to kill. Like, they need Lena and Oracle and DK stuns. Like, they just do not have the the magic burst damage to kill him off. It's so much physical damage, and he's going to build up reactive armor so quickly against the PL that killing him is very difficult. And this hero is going to just wreck the PL at pretty much all stages of the game. So they have to kill Old Chicken at the start of the fight because of how bad it is for PL to fight into Timbersaw. Hmm... Does Timbersaw build a B... Do you think Timbersaw is going to build a BKB this game? I feel like he might have to build it eventually to mitigate a lot of the incoming Disable from C-Deck. I think eventually he will need to. Possibly after the Ag Scepter. I think right now he's thinking, I'll just get an Ag Scepter and it gives, he'll have such high hit, like HP pool with the Ags plus Bloodstone oh. that he won't need a BKB because he can survive the burst damage just by having sheer hit points. He has Blink now, though, so he's got a way of sort of jumping into the middle of the fray. Yep. Oh, okay, so he, instead of finishing the axe, he picks up the Blink. That's a nice little yep. u utility item. I think a core, it is definitely a core item on Timber Sword. It's just a matter of, like, when you actually buy it and pick it up. Got two coming in up into the top lane. I see an army, but... Army just wants to farm. This guy does not want to fight yet. Ooh, got blink the Echo. Oh, oh, he got the doppelganger off. He didn't chain stun it, but not going to matter. Oh, no. Rest in pieces, PL. Didn't get the best doppelganger. His real hero was like super close to the everyone chasing him. Eleven. Oh. Ah, oh, Timbersaw should fissure. be able to finish off Icy. Yeah. There's, there's no way. Yeah. They're just gonna snowball off of this. They're gonna possibly even look to poke around high ground if CTY wants to. He's got the items to do so, and there we go. Picks up the S and Y. So gets that little bit of extra chase potential, especially at dealing with the uh, pesky life sealer. Well, speaking of which, he's yeah. in mid lane. Fireball oh, Dota. Can you land him? Yeah. I mean, you might try to chase him down with the Radiance. I don't think this... Okay, this is actually working. Saw he for a heal. Oh, he's out it's of the Radiance Rage to the Tombstone! Oh! Oh, the zombies! Okay, this... 
Is it's that any reinforcements? There's Tempest all coming back in. He so could rage TP perhaps. Die. Oh, he's got no TP. He's, oh, this could. Are there, okay, there's gonna, eight, this, okay, okay, never mind. He's got new all right, car. it's GTA. Remember, you know, there's <laughs> your car gets blown up. As long as you don't die while you're inside, you, you get another one. You're good. You're fine. And, and meanwhile, up top though, we've got a wrecking being thrown out, and everyone on Cedar that was chasing. They just sort of back out at that point. Oh, this freaking life steal. This blink not so working. <laughs> Not when there's a Radiance in on you. And oh, Chicken, he may have come in. Nice full stuff. Pushes them back out. He's still taking a bit of damage here. Inflame, luckily, completes his BKB. CTY on the front lines. The Aegis carrier. Land him. Oh, Land him suffering. Sad. Sad and dying. They'll look to kill off CTY. They kill him once. They may just be able to go on him a second time. This Lifestealer, he can't blink in. The Radiance Lifestealer, perhaps the counter to these blink initiators. CTY, though, proving that he is still the boss carry. Old Chicken on the front line, taking quite a bit of damage. 11 at the back. June will bring him down. Now he's lost his vehicle, though. Can he man fight? And I don't think the answer is yes. Maybe oh, with I the help of the Dragon Knight. Can they, kill, can they kill him? CTY, uh, he's, he's low. He's got a Shadow Blade in three seconds. The Radiance burn damage. Maybe just enough. Breathe fire. They get the slow, and CTY goes down. Triple kill for Old Chicken, though. He's got 17 Bloodstone charges. That's got to be oh. a slight concern. June's HP melted after that one I... nuke. Oh, he hung June? around! June! He might drop Infest? here! Oh, he's got the siege creep. Uh... Okay, that's like finding <laughs> a little car. like Toyota Corolla right there. Like, that's not the car you want, but you take it. When you're desperate, you hop in and get the hell out of there. Inflame, TP... No. Oh. That Toyota Corolla is going down and going down pretty fast, though. June... Oh, I see, though. Laguna's online. Looking okay. for a Laguna target. Now oh, I got fogged. Alright, he makes it out of there. Demons, gonna be a little bit careful. He's got Vitality Boost. We'll see, probably see something like an Atos maybe is gonna be pretty nice just for the kiting potential it gives you. And also, it's great for chasing down the Life Stealer because you know how you get that mischance chance on the Radiance? You get the extra, what was it? Attack, I uh, know, oh it's like attack. I forgot what it's called. It's like accuracy. Yeah, it's 40% it's, extra accuracy. It's 40% true strike basically. That, is the there best way. It's, it's called 40% accuracy, but really, it, it basically means you have true strike 40% of the time. It's it's weirdly, it's very confusing. It's a nice little perk, though, since you're going up against the Radiance Burn. The Radiance Miss chance. Even though it's so minor, it's, there are going to be chances where you don't want to miss that right click. This Timbersaw is just a beast in these fights, so he has 19 Bloodstone charges now, about to complete. Throw an Ag Scepter in this guy, and suddenly you're looking at, like, Almost 50% increase in his damage output in a fight if he's landing his spells. Well, this has been the most entertaining 6.86 game I've casted or watched yet, so <laughs> I'm glad we got this game too. <laughs> I'm glad as well. And this might end up being a, a one to one game if Eho managed to take the game as well. It depends if they can sort of get by the, the lifestealer pest nuisance. It's sort it's of thing that really we're nice with. against the blink daggers. Like, as much as I kind of downplayed it, earlier like trying to initiate in when li like life still will scout the back lines he's not afraid of dying because he's in an ancient creep and then if he ever finds the shaker you can't blink in timber saw yeah you can't blink in at least you can timber chain so it's not as big a deal but it works out as a pretty nice kind of utility option because of that it forces 11 to be reliant on this four staff initiation rather than blink as well so yep. you can't just you can't really say okay blink is my way in no he's gonna have to try and get a four staff in instead so I think for Earthshaker, is not in the worst position. He's sort of got that backup plan. The big problem still stuff. for c -Deck is just that SF and Timbersaw are both massive. Like, this SF is... Yeah, he's 2, 5, and 5, but... You don't really look at the kill score at this stage of the game. You look at the net worth and, like, the current items. And SF has itemized for the late game. He's got top net worth... Well, not above the Timbersaw, but above all the Dire Heroes by a pretty big margin. And the itemization on C-Deck Youth, like, on heroes like Lifesteal is not going to be, like, that scary. Like, SF deals with Lifesteal ridiculously well. He's got mo good movement speed. Radiance doesn't bother the SF too much, so it's going to be really hard in the late game for C-Deck Youth here. The PL is still their only hope for the late game. I'm rather surprised. I thought Ame would have more farm than this. He's under yeah. the Lifesteal in terms of net worth. I... So Lifesteal's been suffering. doing what he can to create space as well, but there's just too many threats for him. Like, yeah. the Blink Shaker, like, he can't farm by himself when you're up against the Shaker. June? He's oh, I think forward. this is where June gets punished. Yep. 
lagging all over the I place, think, but... I don't know if he could have rage TP because of the physical damage there, but definitely something he wants no. to keep in mind is to run around with a TP in case there is an opportunity to rage TP when your ancient dies, but... Not the biggest deal. Oh, that smoke! Uh, maybe in vision of this Radiant Ward. Nope. Depends who they jump on, though. Oh, oh there's a lot of heroes. Invis Earthshaker! Sentry Ward is if there. Goes... Okay, Lanham. And Lanham. They're trying to set up for the Shaker, Lanham. though. Okay, they killed Lanham. Shaker was like, Go bait, Lanham! I've got your back! No, no. PL Illusion was <laughs> actually quite. on the Shaker, I believe, stopping his blink. And now a lot of mana has been lost by Shaker. One Whoop. more right click cancels his blink. He hit him! Doesn't want to commit though. They're worried about backup and rightly yeah. so. They actually keep IC yeah, in place. Yeah, SF is But there's scary. no way for SF. Oh, that was not the best visual, unfortunately. Jeez, 20 bloodstone charges. Timber saw almost with a shivers now as well. Plate mail picked well, almost halfway there, but I say almost because he's farming so ridiculously fast. Still top of the net worth charts. Old chicken just and, needs 1800 gold. And I think now there's a new problem that's going to arise for C deck. You can kill the Timbersaw, but he's probably going to respawn almost instantly. Yep. Because of all those Bloodstone charges. He's got a free Aegis, essentially, because of this Bloodstone. I guess you so... just kill him and then run, and he gives you a ton of gold because of how farmed he is, but... Well... He's never going to leave the team. He, he just doesn't leave the team, which is the correct decision for Eho, and they don't need to separate. And so they never put themselves at, at real risk of being just picked off by c -Dope. Old chicken just manning up against this tier 2 tower. He doesn't care. <laughs> Life still trying to go Life. for the 9. With, with this, 64 base damage, Against no. <laughs> the SF 250 plus. Yeah, yeah, unlikely to work. So PL's picked up a Reaver. He's going pure survivability, which I think he just has to do against the Earthshaker especially. Yeah. Aegis is going to be taken very shortly as Roche. Going to be coming yeah. up in about approximately 30 seconds. 20 seconds, I think, more. More like it. Oh, top though. Army. Forced to TP out because of Old Chicken. Old Chicken, like, when you're having to TP away from just like a solo hero, I mean, yeah, it's a Timber Soul, it's kind of like a counter to you. It's, it's still bad news. SF? Oh. Normally it's the Timber Soul to TP away from a PL. That, that's normally the case, that's the other way around. Yeah, I mean, the PL sh should typically be out farming a Timber Soul, but that is very far from what we're witnessing here. So, Lifesilla has taken the role of the dragon this game. He's no longer. Hey, he spent more time inside Ancient Creeps than he spent in Lifesilla form this game. That's actually ridiculous. Well, he doesn't need to be in Lifesilla form. You've got extra effective HP because of the Ancient. Yep. <laughs> That's. And it's like it's like you double your HP. So yeah, you've got to kill. You've got to kill the dragon, then you've got to kill the Lifestealer. And he's found a new vehicle. Here we go. Granite Golem once more. He's good to go. Uh, I guess that's just his preference yeah. that game. See, Granite Golem, take Granite Golem. It's good for the team. The aura is actually really nice because it gives all your teammates nearby bonus HP. Now he's got an AC, so he's going to be providing some useful auras for his team. He can cancel Blink Daggers. He's got a slight mischance as well from the Radiant. So there is some useful stuff coming out of the Life Sealer with the Granite Golem. So... Not a completely useless fella. Unfortunately for him, let's, he can't one-shot zombies. Let's see if it's actually going to work, though. His Roche is being taken, and Lifesteal just going to sort of hang around and hit CT while he's also Get away Roche from the Ancient. so low as well. Oh. He actually is going to lose the Granite Golem. Could back off and grab another Ancient in just a second here. There's no dragon there, though. He's they have just to left the babies. It, but... Yeah. yeah. June's just going to run in with the raid. CTY yeah, says... Oh, oh maybe they do. CTY what? getting very low. Who's getting the Aegis? CTY commit. DK picks it up though. Oh. Blink, Echo not doing enough. Ehome's old chicken though. He's ready. He's here to clean up and in flame. Drops the Aegis. They have a Sentry Ward ready for his respawn should he try Shadow Blade away. No chance in hell for... Okay, he'll Blink away. Who needs Shadow Blade? Should have had the Chakram perhaps waiting for the respawn. I'm pretty sure you can stop the Blink, but... Minor misplay from old chicken who other than that has played a hell of a game. That was yeah. actually a pretty good result. The entire time was PL good. was farming, they stop Aegis going CTY's way, and all they lose is Lifestealer and Lena. That's like Lifestealer's job to create space, and that's exactly what he just did. Is it enough though? It, it just seems like it's such a mi it's a it's a major fight, but the outcome for it, it's not it's not quite enough for C deck to really make anything happen out of it. They're not pushing towers, they're not taking objectives. 
So you, you delay e home a little bit, but that's not going to stop them from taking these objectives. And it's going to come to a point where they're going to be starved for map control. There's no way that CDX can get map control ever because of how e home is played. Yeah. This game, I feel like, just gets harder and harder. Inflame just does not have the farm. He played really well in the early game. Managed to turn around like a 1v4 scenario and get a kill, but right now, it just doesn't have the items for 40 minutes in the game. Same for the PL. Uh, the PL in a similar position. Has a heart of Tarras now, but he needs another item or even two items, I feel, before he's going to become a big late game threat. CTY mm. and Old Chicken just always a step or two ahead. What items would you would you actually like to see on the PL? I know he needs the damage, so Butterfly being ideal pickup. Actually, Lena going to be used up into the air, but looks like Old Chicken's going to be on the case as well as CTY. So Icy's dead, and Demon, he's going to try and heal himself up, but unfortunately, False Promise is really a False Promise as he's going to drop. So he goes down all of a sudden in flame. Well, pops a Shadow Blade, but unfortunately, that's going to be the uh -oh. end of the dragon. Unless it's not slain. Still hanging around. Pretty tanky now, I'm lagging out completely. Now he dies. There we go. So PL has not Three come heroes. to a... They've been team fighting the last, like, 10, 15 minutes, and PL has not shown up to a single one of them, which is the right play. But very much shows the state of the game for C Deck Youth, where PL can't team fight. He's just trying to rat, and every single T2 tower is still up on the map. So the rat is not even really taking towers, it's just purely getting PL farm, but not really applying any actual pressure on EHO. E this is when you Looking wish good. you had an anti-mage rather than a PL. Yep. Anti-mage would do much more than a PL this game, considering the play style. Echo Slam comes out, they want to kill this PL. He's tanky though, and with the Timber Chain missing. Aim, Doppelganger's backwards, safe for now, looks like he will survive. Oh, blink forward though, with the Chakram, he'll get the kill, oh. old chicken. This guy knows how to play a good timber saw. There's no buyback on the PL either. Uh, June? Oh. Life sealer, trying to do life sealer things. Unfortunately, Ooh. not able to do much. Mm, yeah. Assault Crass and Radiance, it's not really going to give him the best fighting chance. An old chicken. Just going to go right mm, after demons. demons. Can he finish him off though? I don't know. This will be close perhaps. Don't... Demons yeah. will he blow up. We'll find out soon. Okay, he got oh, fully healed he up. Back up the full. Close, what am I talking then, about? What do I know? I don't know. <laughs> There needs to be a, a marker above their head so you yeah. sort of know how much the how much damage they're going to be taking as spectators. Like yeah, a spectator help with the false promise. Like, a number going up and down as to how much HP they'll lose or gain at the end of it. That would be, like, the dream. Or at least maybe a bar. So if they're taking too much damage, the bar goes red and rises yep. or something. Or if it's more HP, then it's green and it rises. I like it. You're yeah. helping fix the game for us incompetent Dota Just... 2 casters. By that, I mean myself. <laughs> oh, look, he's almost <laughs> dead! Oh, what am I talking about? Full HP. <laughs> <laughs> so, Oracle buys an a Atos not going to do much this game at this point. Like, it's... Timbersaw has mobility that he doesn't care about the Atos. SF has got a butterfly. This is... This is looking like we got a game three. Something... I jinxed it. We something fun it. and different. Yeah, we, we, we have done it. it. <laughs> and in very entertaining fashion. I gotta give a big shout to C Deck Youth for providing this wonderful Dota 2 game. Absolutely. If it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here. At all. No. He home gonna play it safe and back off. Where's the Ag Scepter? Kaka, he's got the money for it. Is he gonna buy it? I feel like the Earth Spirit. He's 3 1 and 14. Uh, he, he sold the bottle. I think he's buying it. Yeah. He's. he's... Oh, oh there we go. Yeah, there he's, he's buying, buying the pieces. This is 100 gold short. So Dagon last item for Timbersaw. I think that's pretty standard. Just getting more burst damage. The able to finish off heroes a little bit easier. And you've got so much mana just to spam this out. So I like this as a fifth item for Timbersaw. There we go. Dagon four even. Once he's got the career. <laughs> so what's the HP pool or some of these supports? Lena's just clipped over 1k. Oh, actually, in the mid lane, never mind. Did not get to see this, but we got one hero already dead, which is that Oracle. And all of a sudden, oh. flame TP's out. Oh, the echo is too late. If he, oh. the BK warp B wore off just before the TP, but the echo was like half a second off. Really nice attempt coming out from Shaker there. It's on cool. Uh, if they get that kill, it's just game over. DK, I don't think he had buyback. He just bought the. He just bought an armor. When you're buying an armor at 41 minutes. It's like one of those like 45 minute Mask of Madness but d purchases when you're defending your high gun. You're just like, what can I buy that's going to give me a little bit right now? And well, I don't think it's going to be enough. We got our life sealer. So we're going to guard the tower for the, in the meantime as our DK is looking for a target, hiding under Shadow Blade. 
don't, do you really want to jump onto somebody though? I honestly wouldn't even attempt it if you're a C deck. Old Chicken did end up dying the one time, so he's now got 19 Bloodstone charges, which means it won't be quite the instant respawn. Almost back up to 20 though. Yeah. So, not like he's going to lose that much out of it. No, it'll be a very fast respawn regardless, and Dagon 5. Did he buy back? Soon. No, he didn't. No, I think he just had a very fast. He had like a, I don't actually. It was the last team fight where he went down. I guess I don't entirely recall. This game's just been so crazy all over the place. <laughs> so PL is the... officially being treated. He is a non-factor this game. It feels like. So they spent all this time making space for Army, and it's all for nothing, really. Yeah. This is a real shame for C deck. Because PL in general, he can fight, he can fight pretty early, but because of the way Ehomes played the game out and because PL didn't get the space he wanted, he's, as you said, he's a non-factor, he can't do anything. Even with this amount of HP, there's just too much damage output from both a Timbersaw and a Shadow Fiend. Yeah. They had a, I mean, you could see what C deck youth, they had a very, like, kind of clear game plan for, like, individual heroes, like Life Sealer, run around, create space, PL. Use that space to farm. DK, look to find pickoffs using your Blink Dagger and Shadow Blade, but it didn't really come together as like a team strategy just because of how badly the PL matches up against the Radiant Draft largely, and also just like the Life Stealer being largely ignored for a good portion of this game. Ehome just said, okay, Life Stealer, you can run it whoever you want, but we're just going to ignore you and chase your PL around. Wherever PL went, Shaker was there, Earth Spirit was there, they were just continuously pressuring the PL's lane. Even when they weren't killing him, they were keeping him away from farm. Yeah, so it was just really good plays coming out from Ehome. They, they, they sort of knew what they wanted to do and they they ignored the diversion. Yep. As some people get tempted. Unfortunately for Eleven, being chased up by Lifestealer again. We'll, we'll, we'll sort of push him back. But... <laughs> I guess well, that's one hero who can not worry too much about a Timbersaw. At this point, you could say the Rottweiler has turned into a Terrier. Can't really hurt these heroes anymore. No. He is not exactly a fearsome fella. Timbersaw even no. saying, yeah, I'll right click well, you some. Let's let's be honest, you look at that golem's face. Are you going to be intimidated? I don't think so. Oh wow, eleven can be an echo slam for that kill. Yeah, that's a derpy looking golem. Well. Right now, this has been the Timbersaw show. I, you mentioned Old Chicken needs to make up for his previous game. He's done that and more. He has had a hell of a Above and beyond. Here. Yep. Sorry. I like how Undying is just running around with sentry wards and a quelling blade, like trying to de-ward and stuff. Just playing that Honestly, what? selfless support role. Here we go. Kaka, Acceptor. Oh, that. They're gonna stun onto Old Chicken, but there we go. There's the pull. There's ags on Karka. <laughs> there's there's the nothing grip. they could do. You can't actually kill anyone anymore because Karka's here with the eggs. If you try and chain some someone with a DK stun into lean and stun, they'll just get pulled back to safety. It seems very difficult to hold this one. If Ehome really wanted, they could try and just wait for the next Roshan, which is coming up in about a minute's time. But I think they know they're just they've got all the items they need, and Aegis is not really crucial for them, but. We'll see. They back off a little bit more now. Seems they do want to scout out, and there is a DD rune right by that pit. It'll expire by the next yeah. Roche. Oh, oh, they could get it they... like right as Roche respawns. I think. He's Give it 20 wait. seconds. Oh, yeah, I think it's actually going to be there. He's asking for a bottle, I think. He's like, does anyone have a bottle? I've got an item slot. I want a bottle. Pick it up now, it's expiring. No. 10 seconds. Take, take it! Okay, Earthshaker can yeah, take it. Yeah, I think Shaker's it. like, yo, bro, you, you actually had to pick this up now. Alright, Shaker's gonna grab it. There it's okay, he can make use of it with the enchant totem. And at this point, it doesn't really matter. DD or no DD, Roche is pretty easy. Okay, old chicken! Stunned up, Requiem there as well. He gets pulled to safety! There's that geomagnetic grip. Lena gets zapped by the Dagon, and now, here we go. SF winds up, takes just the one kill with the right click. Kaka. Getting pretty low, he needs to be careful. Whoop, Boulder Toss there still has held on to his hero, the, the turn hero into Stone Spell as the two heroes get taken out. Cedic Youth on the run. Old Chicken, he's looking for some smaller chickens to fry. And Cedic Youth forced to buy back, and well, I don't think they're going to be holding on much longer. And even as the fight was happening, there were creeps pushing into the base. Oh, PL actually died because the shadow did not get to see that. Full HP PL just getting blown up as well. Wow. Well, I see a lot of buybacks happening. Uh, they're buying back and they're not really killing all too much. CTY still has BKB. 
He's just gonna pop that and oh, okay. That was one Selena. June next in line. CTY says thanks for the kill. Old chicken, 24 blood surgeon up, blood so charges up. He's just burning through everyone with the chakrams, and this is it. C deck youth. They'll GG out. What a game. Old chicken. CTY. I mean, this was very much a team performance, as much as it's one of those games that makes it look like a like a two-man show with CTY and Old Chicken. It was just the nature of some of these support heroes, like Undying and Earth Spirit, a super defensive, like protect your carries, secure them their farm kind of heroes. And Earthshaker, he did his job as far as hunting the PL wherever he went. Yeah, I actually had some concerns with E Home's draft because they had so many melee heroes, but they make it work. And I think it was also because of the way C Deck sort of drafted themselves into a particular way, where if it didn't work, it wasn't going to end up well for them. And we see the outcome of it. They had a life stealer that did absolutely nothing outside of the radiance burn. DK wasn't able to really come online, and hence Ame wasn't able to get enough as well, just because E Home knew what they had to do. They just had to corral all these heroes up, ignore the life stealer, ignore the bait, and just go straight for the throne, or at least yeah. straight for the jugular. So, it's definitely a go for sad, game three. Sad PL game. Like there's, there's like almost countless other carries that would have just worked so much better here. I mean, you mentioned the anti mage heroes like that that can lock down a Timbersaw in place and punish him when he's low mana, but good news is, like you said, game three, coming up. E-Home, C-Deck Youth, that was a, a it felt like a long one. 47 minutes so, a bit on the long side, but uh, it was some, some fun stuff. We're gonna take a break guys, when we come back, it will be game number three. C-Deck Youth versus E-Home that decided is winner bracket action, so even should one of these teams lose, which one of them will, they will have another chance to fight their way through the lower bracket. Don't go anywhere. Myself, Gods, as well as Danily will bring you game number three in just a jiffy.